I'm Shelby Johnson, and uh, we're in Pensacola, Florida. We're talking about bees today. And I'm Zoe Johnson. We both volunteer at the extension, the Scamby County Extension Office, and as much as we can with 4-H also, helping people, anybody that needs uh, advice or bees or woodware, those kind of things for uh, learning about beekeeping. Um, our company is called Bee Sanctuary Honey Farms, where we uh, provide pollination service to small organic farmers and also supply our local community with raw honey. Well, um, so growing up, you know, my granddad kept bees, and so on the side, I was, you know, volunteered to help out on some of the heavier chores, and really always had an interest in bees. And um, whenever the varroa mite and the viruses that they transmit started to really affect the population of the bees, it, um, I got extra involved and started. Uh, you know, raising bees and trying to understand what was going on with the worldwide population decline. And that just one thing led to another to where we got to where we're, you know, breeding queens and, and raising uh, bees that are more resistant to the, uh, the varroa mite. And then we uh, supply those to local beekeepers. Um, when I was about eight or nine, I remember my dad brought home a couple of hives and I started helping him out with that. So it's been 10 years since then. And she's quite, quite the beekeeper. She's learned to graft and raise queens and learns a lot about genetics and all the ins and outs of bees. Uh, probably one of the better beekeepers for several hundred miles. So do you all want to talk about some of the mechanics of bees and what we do? Yeah. Okay, well this, this that we're leaning against is a, is a bee truck. It's got a steel flatbed. And this is how we uh, transport bees. Mostly at night when it's cooler and the bees tend to stay inside their colonies at night when it's dark. And then we'll, we pull behind it a trailer with a piece of machinery and we'll unload the bees on pallets four at a time and set those at the right time, depending on who's growing what. Uh, so when they start to have some bloom set, we'll set the bees and depending on the type of crop, you know, they'll be there anywhere from two weeks to a month, you know, pollinating uh, whatever the crop is, watermelons, you know, uh, cucumbers, those kind of things. And then we'll go back and pick them up again at night and, and then take them to one of our uh, out yards. We have some different fallow land that just uh, is only good for keeping bees on. It's not land that you would build on. So we make use of that land as, so it's productive in that way. And then these are the what we call woodware. And Zoe will go through all the types of what each component is and how we raise bees in those. This is a smoker. So it's real important that when you go to an apiary and you're working with the bees, um, it's important to go ahead and have a nice, cool smoke. It, it slows down their sensory response, and so it's a calmer, uh, nicer event for them to have hive manipulation. Kind of like when you go to the doctor and they're going to do something to you, they'll, they'll numb the area so that it doesn't hurt so bad. So smoke, nice, cool smoke is actually a, a good benefit to the bees. Helps them to stay calm and, and not have a traumatic experience because there's things we have to do to help them uh, survive the onslaught of viruses and, and pests and things. And then this is our, our number one tool, it's called a hive tool. And this is how we can pry open the boxes because the bees glue them together. Makes it really hard to open and also for cleaning things and that kind of stuff. And then this is uh, one of the a bee veil, so we'll wear this to keep them from getting in our face too much. Their favorite spot to sting is the eyes, nose, mouth, and ears. And uh, so as long as you have a, a hooded veil, that covers about 95% of stings. Okay? 
All right, Zoe, tell them all about these hive parts. So this is a hive, and these are all, all the different parts of a hive include your your lid, and there's an entrance up here for the bees to get at. This is your super, where all of the honey is produced. And right in between the super and this is a brood box is a queen excluder. That way the queen stays here and the brood is the term for babies, baby honeybees. And the, crew, the queen will lay all the babies in here and she can't go up into the honey so because if she does she'll lay eggs in the honey. And so the queen excluder separates the queen from the worker bees that produce honey. Um, another important thing to know is don't stand in front of the entrance of the hive because there's a lot more bees going that way and that's like where they all enter and exit so you'll be more in their flight path. So standing to the side or even the back is most ideal. So he's smoking the, he smoked the entrance of the hive and now he smoked the top of the hive just for the, the air current inside to, for the smoke to move all around and it helps calm them because it's like ripping up a roof from someone's house. So since there's no queen excluder here, he looks in the lid and he'll look very carefully as he's moving frames to make sure that he doesn't kill a queen because there's only one queen per hive. And, um, yeah. So that's called a beetle blaster. This is an option to help fight pests without chemicals. So this is called a beetle blaster and it has um, vinegar and some oil in it. And the vinegar is what attracts the beetles to come to this trap, basically. And the oil is, helps kind of kill the beetle. And it, it use, it's used to you know, attract any beetles that are inside the hive and to kill it. That way they don't affect the hive because it is a pest to the hive. So the cap part is the brood, which is all the little babies. Don't be afraid to let some weeds grow in your yard. They're really what the bees need. Um, and that, that'll be the biggest benefit we can all do as, as humans to help the honeybee, is have long fence rows or in little pieces of area where um, you're not necessarily worried about having a grass area. Let some of the weeds grow up and uh, the bees will really appreciate having that resource of nectar and pollen. Um, if we all chipped in a little bit, it would make a big difference in them being able to have better nutrition and then they can help defend themselves from the varroa mite and the viruses that they're struggling with.